The QCA and surrounding areas were hit with some severe weather this morning. And we are bracing for more. Multiple neighborhoods in Rock Island took on some pretty rough damage. Take yeah, a look. Take a look at this. Trees completely uprooted. Damage to homes and vehicles this morning. More than 17,000 Mid-American customers in Rock Island alone were without power. That's roughly a quarter of the county. Currently, more than 13,000 customers remain without power in the Quad Cities. Mid-American Energy says they have 300 people working on restoring power. They expect power to be restored, hopefully, over the next few hours. And here's a look at the storm as it moved through our area today. This video captured just outside the News 8 studio here in Moline. Trash cans and debris blowing, ominous skies, and of course, lots of rain and damaging wind. And the Quad Cities was also hit with large hail. This picture just shows just how hard it came down, leaving a dent in the ground. Hail was anywhere from the size of a golf ball to the size of a tennis ball. People measuring the hail, they found some up to three inches, just huge, dangerous, and of course, potentially damaging to cars, homes, and anything that it's pelting. Amazing to see. Meanwhile, the fate of Rock Island's controversial statue, the 11th Street Blackhawk, was decided today by the weather. City officials realized the statue toppled this morning, a casualty of the wind. Last year, the city of Rock Island unanimously decided to donate the statue to Blackhawk Bank and Trust, which came under fire by the Native American Coalition of the Quad Cities. The handoff fell through and the statue has been in limbo ever since, at least until today. The city lacking funds to renovate or tear it down. Officials say they aren't sure what will become of the fallen landmark. And we are monitoring the next wave of severe weather, which is expected in the coming hours as a warm front moves into our area. Yeah, and we are really just bracing for it because obviously you've already seen just the damage what it can do. already done today. James Sahara, you've been busy all afternoon. Yeah, all, all morning too. Yeah, with that first wave that came in here that has now, of course, produced hundreds of reports of uh, wind damage, hail, and even a tornado that was reported in Kelowna as well. Here's a little uh, setback of what took place starting around like 530 in the morning or so. Had some small hail that was reported outside of Princeton and Kiwani. As we made our way through the early morning hours, uh, there was like a kind of a, a, a front that came through uh, that kind of opened up the doors in the atmosphere to kind of take the activity that you see to your left, right around Ottumwa. And instead of moving it north, look at this, it actually steered its way east. And it just blossomed into one strong rotating thunderstorm as that continued to make its way off to the east and then quieted down uh, just after lunchtime uh, across the area. Now, of course, we're keeping an eye on some of the activity that is down to our south. Uh, let's see what we have here. Well, first, let's talk about the tornado watch. That is out for the entire area. But if I had to break this down even more, I would say we're looking mostly along the river, the counties along the river, and it's certainly off to the west. Okay, that's kind of what I'm seeing uh, right now. And you can see some of the activity now that's popping up, especially south and west of the Quad Cities. Already numerous uh, thunderstorm warnings are going on. Some of the activity from earlier today may be kind of helping to uh, in, uh, permit this activity to make its way northward that we see. But nonetheless, something we will definitely be keeping an eye on. And you guys talked about the warm front. Yes. This is going to be, with warm fronts, tremendous amount of shearing going on along it. So if these storms make their way to that warm front, that's when you get that rotating of the storms take place, and that's where things could get really nasty. But look at the difference in temperatures from 54 degrees in the Buke to lower 80s that we see in Burlington, Mount Pleasant, even around Macomb. Uh, Burlington actually reached a record high of 86 degrees. Unbelievable. But things right now are in waiting. Watching that cell down to our south will show how everything is going to be blossoming as we make our way through the night and especially tomorrow morning as well in just a few minutes.